Well, this is part of the general state of insecurity we find in our country today. At a point, you remember that it was um, Abba that was very notorious uh, for such activities. And it appears that um, they, are, they are pursuing them from one state to the other. When the one state becomes too hot for them, the gangs move on to the other states. Uh, I hope after chasing them away from Edo, they will not be heading towards Lagos. But um, speaking more seriously, um, something has to be done about this menace. Um, from the angle, first of all, of the government providing uh, adequate patrol security around our major highways. Um, because when these people are kidnapped, they have to pass through certain, you know, prominent roads, so certain trunk A or trunk B roads to get to where they are going. I'm not sure somebody can be kidnapped at a particular point and the person will be kept within a radius of maybe one kilometer or two kilometers around that, um, around the spot of kidnapping. So, presumably the person will be taken far away. So I asked myself, where are the security personnel when you are taking this person across the state borders, for example, to another state? How did they beat, you know, these... Um, patrol vehicles, how did they beat the roadblocks? And because we keep seeing these roadblocks. So we ask ourselves at times, what is the usefulness of these roadblocks? Is it just to collect the, 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 the 100, 100 naira or 50, 50 naira? Why will you mount roadblocks when you are, you are not apprehending these people who commit such, who commit such um, heinous crimes? You know? So it is, uh, it's a big worry. Security is not just the exclusive responsibility of the state government. You cannot tell me that the state governors should take the blame if there is security breakdown and at the same time you don't give them exclusive and absolute power to tackle security. You can't say that. That is why such situations give credence to the viewpoint of those people who call for state police. Because if there's state police, then the governors become the actual you know, security chiefs, the actual people on whose table the box stops in terms of security. And so you cannot hold them absolutely responsible for such situations. But you cannot tell me that because the, these crimes are happening in a particular state, then we have to focus on the, 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 the government of that state. No. There's something wrong about our federal system. The federal government has complete responsibility now regarding security. They have Imagine a situation where the federal government can withdraw and replace the security personnel of a governor like um, Rotimi Amechi at will. It shows that the governors are just dummies in the hands of the federal government. And that is how Abbasanjo removed a lot of governors, if you remember. And I make bold to say that it is not Okada men that are involved in heinous crimes like that. Those who have the wherewithal to handle dangerous weapons, kill policemen who were on their chase. You know, they killed four policemen chasing, you know, we are chasing them regarding the Zekome. Those who have the wherewithal and the, the, the intelligence to smuggle people like that, take them, meander them through security and keep them somewhere and contact people for ransom. Those people are not Okada men, I can assure you. Those people, they are people who have had, you know, some training in security in the past. They are ex servicemen, retired servicemen, or people who have been at it for a long time. I think we should pray. We should uh, beg the kidnappers because for now, uh, they are the lords of the manor. They are holding the yam, the knife, the, and the fire now. They are holding everything now in their hands. 
Um, even when people like us in the past, we have been arrested and detained by law enforcement agencies, the SSS and the police. You know, we have been their customer for many years as a result of our struggles. It is always a harrowing experience if you are in the hands of even trained people, not to talk of where you are in the hands of hoodlums, like where, what Uzekoma is facing now, when you are in the hands of outlaws. It continues to reoccur because from our time, this ASU problem becomes unending. You don't listen to the teachers until they go on strike. And at the end of the day, we hear things like the federal government is ordering them back to school. That is complete rubbish. If you think of where, how we spend money in this country, where most of our resources go to, then you understand the grounds of our soul. Some kind of very drastic and radical policy we need to make. Perhaps we should even insist, just like the code of conduct for public officers say, you cannot own a foreign account, you cannot do this, you cannot do this. Perhaps now, one of the code of conduct we need to insert in our constitution is as a public officer, you cannot put your children in foreign schools or private schools. You must, your children must attend government schools. It should be part of the code of conduct for public officers.